uh, honestly, and, and I do not say this out of a false sense of modesty, uh, I am not worthy of being asked this question. Um, there are far, far greater scholars. I am a minor student of knowledge. There are far greater ulama uh, who are more capable of, of, of answering this question. But inshallah, as somebody who's active in the Western world and who has just studied a little bit, let me just say that in my reading of the contemporary uh, scholars and in my uh, own uh, attempt to gain knowledge, I have not come across any other alim who is as prolific and as erudite and as eager to link modern issues with classical Islam and more qualified than Sheikh Yusuf Al-Qardawi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him. Sheikh Qardawi for me represents the best of every single field that an alim should have. It's not just ilm, it's also activism. It's also a genuine concern for the entirety of the ummah. Yani when he speaks about, and he's not Palestinian or he's not Uzbekistani or he's not Chinese, but when he speaks about the Muslims of China, the Muslims of Palestine, the Muslims around the world, you feel a genuine love and concern. He was always with the people against tyranny and injustice. His love and concern was for the ummah beyond just academics and books. And he himself was tortured in prison. He himself was put in jail with Gamal Abdel Nasser. He has lived the life of an actual, genuine, bona fide activist scholar. And that is something that is very, very rare. Allah blessed him with so many talents. And if you look at every angle of his life, he embodies the real spirit of what it means to be an alim, a murabbi, somebody who is beyond just giving lectures and fatwas and durus and you know, living comfortable lives associated with people of power and people of influence. Yani khair, there are some people that choose that path and inshallah, yani some people do need to do that for the masses. But Shaykh Qardawi never ever you know, chose that path. He chose the path of difficulty. He chose the path of being with the people. He chose the path of trying to make Islam something that was applicable and practical. And all you need to do is look as, at his book, Al-Halal wal Haram fil Islam. Even if some people criticize 5% of the opinion, so what? I challenge you to find me and quote me any book that tried to replicate classical fiqh in a modern paradigm, in a manner and a methodology that the average Muslim of our 20th century could read and understand. I challenge you to find anybody who has written anything in which they take classical fiqh, and you know, we know how classical fiqh is, you know, the mindset was different, the paradigm was different. You take classical fiqh, and then you completely redo it. The content is the same, but the style, the methodology, the language, the presentation skills, the applicability, this is truly the mind of what we call an abqari, a genius, somebody who is far above and beyond the average person who can simply regurgitate and replicate. His book, Fiqh of Zakah, uh, which was his PhD. Again, yeah. subhanAllah, you read this book, you know, and I read it cover to cover once upon a time when I was you know, interested in doing some Bahd and Zakah. And honestly, and that's his first major book when he was in his 20s. And yeah. you see, this is not the mind of an average sheikh or student yeah. of knowledge. Taking contemporary issues, trying to rethink through in light of Maqas of the Shara. So anyway, I don't want to take too much time, yeah. Sheikh. No, Haytham, Sheikh, we wanted to ask you specifically. MashaAllah, yes. Tabarakallah. Uh, we have with us a Sheikh Haytham Al-Haddad as well, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I know, uh, so I'm saying I feel awkward you're asking me and Sheikh Haytham <laughs> is there, SubhanAllah. <laughs> MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. I, I, uh, Sheikh Yasir, Salaamu Alaikum. I, I said to the brothers, this episode will not be complete unless we have Sheikh Yasir al uh, Sheikh Yasir Qadi with us. MashaAllah, yeah. And I told them we have to have them. And Sheikh Yasser, uh, I, I know it is not yani, it is not the context to mention maybe some of the, 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 the jokes. I rang you just now, and maybe you have taken my call when the janaza was displayed on the, uh, on the TV. And I don't know whether you received, yeah, you received my call, yeah? And I texted you that, Sheikh, please, we want you to be with us. I, I felt Sheikh. that you are among the most qualified <laughs> You said to be on. So, my Sheikh, just to let you know, on the screen, this is the body of Sheikh uh, Yasser, uh, Sheikh uh, Yusuf Al Qaradawi, being taken uh, away from the masjid to the burial ground. Uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Yasser, can you please tell us about your personal interaction? We know that you visited Sheikh Yusuf Al Qaradawi. 
Uh, you visit him, uh, I believe, in Doha, in Qatar. Can you tell us a bit about your personal interaction with him? Uh, yes, so uh, subhanAllah, uh, I mean, firstly, interestingly enough, yani, when uh, Sheikh Qardawi came to America before I was born, uh, our local uh, Sheikh in Houston has a PhD from, uh, uh, from Azhar, Sheikh Rashad uh, Khalifa, uh, was actually a friend of Sheikh Qardawi's. And so Sheikh Qardawi had come to Houston a few times uh, uh, before I was born in the 70s, subhanAllah. And he visited uh, my, my father's house. He stayed at my father's house uh, because my father was the founder of the first masjid in, in Houston. Uh, so my father tells me that, you know, he, he came to this house and I, mean, I was so impressed, mashallah. I had no idea that um, uh, there was that relationship. So then, in any case, obviously, I was growing up. I read his book, Halal and Haram. I was influenced with him, by him. And then eventually, alhamdulillah, uh, five, six years ago when I visited Doha, um, I, you know, contacted some of his students. They told the sheikh that I'm there. So alhamdulillah, I had like an hour, hour and a half with him in his office privately. And uh, I, I, I tweeted a picture of one of that, uh, one of the pictures that was taken there, alhamdulillah. I had a series of questions um, prepared. Uh, unfortunately, I was not able to get it recorded. Uh, but all of the questions that I asked were of a contemporary nature. Obviously, I'm not going to ask something that, you know, what the reason I'm there is to ask him, you know, uh, uh, contemporary uh, topics. And I have them written down somewhere. One of the questions I asked him, for example, again, to give you this idea of what yani, modern fiqh yani, the Sheikh is saying is that uh, I said, Sheikh, the, the concept of muallafati qulubuhum, right, uh, in, in zakah, uh, can we not revive it in our times in America and England? Uh, by forming councils of ulama, and we can earmark, we can, we can, uh, amongst ourselves decide. You know, this person he's not a Muslim, and we need to nuqallin min sharrihim, or even you know, uh, help them if they're helping the Muslim cause, and help them yeah. financially from our zakat money. And he was a big advocate of the because yes, you have to do this. You have to form you know groups of people, and you can revive this concept to the qulubuhum so that it can actually be uh, done in the modern world. So many other issues. Again, the point being, you know, this is what Sheikh Qardawi was a a forward thinking traditionalist. He's definitely yeah. a traditionalist. He, you know, rooted in, in in fiqh. You know, standard fiqh. But he's trying to make Islam contemporary. As you know, he used to call him himself like I'm on the wasatli manhaj, right? Alhamdulillah, yani that's really what he was about, to try to, try to find that moderate voice yeah. of practical fiqh. Make Islam practical and realistic for the people while being authentic to the goals of the Sharia. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on him immensely and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him Jannah al-Firdaus, mashallah, tabarakallah. Shaykh Al-Aziz, please, uh, in uh, final thoughts, final thoughts, inshallah ta'ala, in, in, in 30 seconds, you know, how can we learn from the life? What, what message do we take from the life of Sheikh uh, Yusuf Al-Qaradawi that we can actually implement in our own life? I think that it is true to state that no contemporary scholar has been given the amount of acceptance and love and genuine admiration. Yes, some ulama were in a similar you know, uh, field and ballpark, and no doubt amongst them, as some of our teachers, Sheikh Haytham's teachers as well, you know, Sheikh Ibn Baz and others, Allah did bless a qabul for them, and we ask Allah to grant them for those. Uh, but Sheikh Qardawi had a type of qabul and a type of acceptance that was different. We're not trying to compare and contrast here. And the level of universal mahabba that transcends any one strand of Islam, that transcends any one understanding. Insha'Allah, insha'Allah, it indicates a number of things. First and foremost, and of the most important lessons for all of us who are in this path of Islam is ikhlas. Allah yes. blesses sincerity like he blesses nothing else. And insha'Allah, we, we hope insha'Allah that this is an indication of his ikhlas. Yes. Number two, what we learn from the life of Sheikh Qardawi is that to be a real alim and a real person who is benefiting the ummah, you have to move beyond academics and books. There has to be a genuine concern and care. You must be commenting not just on the past, but on the contemporary and on the present. Sheikh Qardawi always, always yeah. made it a point to talk about the problems of the current ummah, not just past issues which must be done as well. Number three, there is a genuine sense of rahmah. Like, mm -hmm. I want to make Islam something that the average person can aspire to be. Yes. So his understanding of how he's preaching fiqh, what he's doing, even in terms of you know bringing various groups together, the concern was not narrow-minded sectarianism or even mm -hmm. one opinion. The concern was the unity of the ummah. This type of positive yeah. attitude, Mashallah. inshallah, it translated into a level of acceptance for him that I, I can honestly state, I don't think any other alim comes to that level and Allah Azza wa Jal knows best.